I was sitting in my car one day, eating a Krispy Kreme donut, and I thought to myself, why does this stinking donut taste so good? Why doesn't broccoli taste like this donut? Why does what is bad for me taste so good, and what is good for me taste so bad? And then I thought to myself, well, there's been times in my life where I've learned to like broccoli. I've learned to like what's good for me. And as my mind moved on to other things, I thought, you know what? Sin is a lot like this donut. It tastes really good when you're eating it, but you don't feel so good after. And doing the things that God tells me are good for me is a lot like eating broccoli. It doesn't feel good in the moment, but you feel really good afterwards. And then it hit me. God has interwoven the lessons of life into the food that we eat. That by learning that our preferences can change with, with food, we might also learn that our preferences can change with the things that we do. I would rather sit on the couch and drink a beer after work than going for a run. I'd rather spend all the money that I earn on myself rather than practicing generosity. But understanding that I can grow to like broccoli might also teach me that I can grow to like doing something that's good for other people. So here's the punchline. Life is all about learning to like what's good for us. And food is a key element in training us to do that. For most of human history, or at least since the fall of Adam and Eve, food has taught us how to have a relationship with God. Food has been difficult to grow and to harvest and to bake and to clean up after. And that teaches us, um, man, why is this so difficult? We used to just eat a banana from the tree or fruit from the tree. Oh yeah, well it's because we sinned against God. But after we finish all the work, man, food tastes amazing. And it reminds us, man, God is good and he's provided for us still and that we can trust him. After an amazing meal, there's nowhere else that we can look but up to say thank you to God. Because food is a miracle. It miraculously sprouts up from the ground. It grows from trees that were once a tiny seed. Food is amazing. Sadly, most of the food that we eat in the U.S. is so engineered to suit our innate preferences that we never get the opportunity to very practically taste and see that God is good and grow our trust in Him. Through our technology today, we create the illusion that we're not dependent on God anymore for our food. We don't need God, we think, for seeds because we can create them in a lab. And we don't need Him for the soil because we've got synthetic fertilizer. And we don't need them for the rain because we've got irrigation. Well, how's that working out for us? People can't eat bread today. We can't eat peanuts anymore because we're allergic and our bodies are rejecting the food that we're eating. Michael Pollan has said that the U.S. is the most health-obsessed country in the world and at the same time the most unhealthy. Well, I don't think it's a coincidence that we're probably the most spiritually obsessed country in the world and yet at the same time the most spiritually unhealthy. There's been a resurgence today of heirloom seeds. The best chefs in the world only want to cook with vegetables and plants that haven't been genetically manipulated in any way. It just tastes better. So in this sense, when it comes to food, follow your taste buds. Start this process of trying to understand and seeking out foods that haven't been genetically manipulated so that you can find what really tastes good. And when you do that, you'll probably also feel better after you eat it because God's food not only tastes better, but it's better for us. And as you learn to trust God through the food that you eat, you might also begin to learn to trust God with your professional life and your romantic life and other areas of your life as well. More practically now, I wanna go into what does it mean to eat healthy? We've been marketed to so much in the last 50 to 70 years that we've We've gotten confused as to what it means to eat healthy. We've got doctors on either side saying completely different things. And so we're confused. But I think Michael Pollan has done the best job to bring clarity to how to navigate the food landscape in the US. He has an eight word mantra that I think you should write down and memorize. And it's this, eat real food, not too much, mostly plants. The first three words are what I've been talking about this whole video. Eat God's food. So eat food that hasn't been genetically manipulated or engineered, so non-GMO food. 
and try to eat food that hasn't been sprayed with herbicides and pesticides. Try to eat organic. Now, many people might say, well, I don't have the money to buy organic or non-GMO or other healthy foods. To which I would say, well, do you have an iPhone or a MacBook or other expensive gadgets? Do you have a car and a house? Yeah, we, we have the money to, to eat healthy food that's good for us. Today, Americans only spend around 10 to 12% of their monthly income on food, whereas it used to be much higher. Whereas at the same time, Europeans are still spending over 20% of their monthly income on food, and as a result, they're much healthier. When you eat better quality food, you end up eating less because higher quality food is loaded with more nutrients, and so your body feels fuller quicker. Highly processed food, is loaded with empty calories that don't refuel your body. Another thing is to take your time when you eat. Chew more, eat slower, enjoy the meal. Give your body time to realize that it's full. I think this is also why French people aren't as fat as we are. They take two to three hours for lunch. They enjoy the whole process, it's a part of life. We try to cram lunch into 30 minutes or skip it all together so that we can work more. Now, if you're missing meals to work more, you're definitely a workaholic. Eat with other people, and especially your family, and ideally a home-cooked meal. I heard my dad say once that a family that eats together stays together, and I think there's a lot of truth to that. Now, my goal with this video is just to get you started in the right direction. Food is a world in itself, and your journey to health and nutrition will take a lifetime. If you try to be nutritionally healthy by tomorrow, it's like showing up to the gym on January 1st after having not worked out for a year and spending five hours in the gym. If you go that fast and that hard immediately, you're gonna give up a lot quicker. The goal is long-term health and consistency day in, day out is the way to get there. So go slow in the beginning. Choose one thing to focus on at a time. So maybe in the first month, you decide to make drinking at least 60 ounces of water into a habit. And after you make that a daily habit, Maybe you choose one meal out of the day that you decide to eat healthy. Maybe it's a healthy breakfast that you like and that you can eat consistently after a morning run. I personally developed an interest in nutritional health when I was in high school, and I learned that what I ate could help me play better at football. So there's a number of other things, just general tips, that I've learned along the way in my nutritional journey that I'll share with you in the notes below.